Howdy. How's it going? It is currently Sunday evening, October 13th, and Spookathon starts tomorrow, and I didn't do any kind of official TBR video for Spookathon this year, so I thought I would take the opportunity now to kind of figure out what my TBR is going to be for Spookathon. Spookathon is a week-long readathon that starts tomorrow. October 14th and it goes until October 20th and the idea of the readathon is to read spooky mystery thriller horror Halloween reads. There is nothing that I love more than those things. I haven't really looked at the challenges really closely. I remember what some of them are and I've been like thinking and formulating a plan in my head but I don't remember for sure all the challenges. The first challenge is to read a thriller which I feel like it's gonna be really easy because I have a lot of those on my list. I feel like either of these could work. It's really a shame that the colors for this year aren't blue or yellow because usually there's always a color challenge you know associated with the cover. Here we have Someone We Know by Sherry Lapina. This one follows a neighborhood where there are several secrets happening and mysterious things going on. We follow one perspective where um, the husband's wife mysteriously goes missing. She's supposed to be off on a girl's trip for the weekend and she ends up never coming home from the girl's trip. There's also another neighbor's son who is breaking and entering into the various houses. I'm really excited to dive into this one. I really enjoyed it. I'm wanted guest by her last year. I have The Wife Between Us by Sarah or Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I don't know too much about this was everywhere. It was like the thriller of the year for 2018. I think it has to do with a woman who was engaged to this man and that man's ex-wife and their relationship dynamic between the three of them. And I'm assuming there's probably a murder or a mystery or something. Say in the front here that it is in the vein of Gone Girl and Girl on the Train. I loved Gone Girl. I was not in love with Girl on the Train. So I wonder if this was gonna air more on the side of which of those books. I'm hoping more Gone Girl. So those could both fit for the thriller option. And then the next challenge is to read a book with a run on the cover. I had planned to use The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson, which is the sequel to Truly Devious, which I read last year her Spookathon, because the cover is very much red. Vanishing Stare is, like I said, the sequel to Truly Devious, which follows this girl Stevie at a boarding school for like the especially gifted. In I think that was the 40s, there was a murder that happened at the boarding school and Stevie is very invested in this, mur in this murder and she is there to try to figure out and solve what happened to the murder. Also kind of seeing the fallout and progression of the investigation from the 40s. But I wasn't able to finish my current audiobook so I'm going to be continuing it into next week because I'm too far into it to like put it on hold for a whole week. And that is Her Pretty Face by Robin Harding which has like a slash of red in the middle of the book which technically would count. I only have maybe two, two and a half hours left of this audiobook, so I don't know if I feel comfortable like considering that to complete a challenge. I mainly follow Frances, who is the mother of a special needs child who is going to this prestigious school, um, and she befriends this woman whose son is in Marcus's class, and they become really close, and they become best friends, and then she starts to find out some things about her best friend. And we're also following a past timeline, pointing DJ who is 11, and his sister was murdered in this horrific way. We're following the trial of that. Probably read from both of these throughout the week. And then the next one is to read a book with a spooky word in the title. For this one I have Rules for the Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall, which I feel like I could also use the Vanishing Stare for this challenge as well since it's vanishing. This is an arc that I was sent from Penguin Teen. It actually already has come out. It came out in September 24th. I think it's kind of like a paranormal supernatural 
contemporary blend. There's a path that shows up in the woods every year and the people who choose to follow the path, the teens that follow the path, go missing I think and our main character's sister followed the path and the past and she's missing and now she's on the hunt for her sister. I've seen some good things on Goodreads since it's come out so I'm excited. I've never read anything by Kate Alice Marshall before. I have a really hard time with YA thrillers too, so I'm going to give this one a chance and see what I think about it. The next one is to read a book with a spooky setting. I feel like this could work. You know, a mystical forest. I feel like The Vanishing Stair could work. You know, a boarding school in the mountainous wilderness hills. That's very removed from society. Either of those could work really well I think so one of those will fill this challenge. And then finally is to read something you normally wouldn't read. This is not at all a uh, spooky story but I have it from the library and it's going to be due back soon and it's fall appropriate so I'm going to count it and that is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks which is a graphic novel about these two kids who work in a pumpkin patch and it is their final year working in the pumpkin patch before they go away to college and it's just full of nostalgia reminiscing and pumpkins and it's very fall appropriate and even though it's not spooky I still feel like it fits the fall aesthetic and I have a really hard time with graphic novels they don't typically work for me I don't know what it is about them but I really want to give this a try also it's been morale and I don't like really anything that I've read by morale this is my like unconventional not really spooky fall choice so there are some of my choices for my TBR for this week though it is quite ambitious I'm you know really hitting it hard this week reading wise very uh color coordinated with the yellow and the blue that is all I have for you right now Next, you will see me tomorrow morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. as I'm getting ready for work. Good morning, my dudes. It's Spookathon day one. I know that this is probably the most attractive angle that you've ever seen in your entire life. It's Monday. It's the first day of the Spookathon, and it is 6 o'clock in the morning, and I am just finishing up getting ready before... I leave for work. On my drive to work this morning, I'm going to listen to Her Pretty Face by Robin Harding, which is what I've been listening to for the last week. I had the intention of having it finished by today. Uh, that did not happen, so I'm not starting a brand new audiobook this week. I do have an audiobook that I picked out for this readathon that I don't even know if I'm going to get to. I don't think I'll finish two audiobooks in one week. That's just not really how I roll. Uh, but I was planning to read The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, which is the sequel to Truly Devious, which I read for Spookathon last year. Her pretty face, I'm really enjoying it. It's this why is it why thriller? Is it an adult thriller? It's kind of like a mix of the two because we're following two timelines. One that's following adults and one that's following teens. So I don't really know what it's technically categorized as. Follow this mom, Francis, whose son is a special needs child, and he is in a special program at this fancy school, um, and her best friend is named Kate. A secret that Francis is hiding from Kate, from everybody in her life that happened to her when she was younger, and she finds out that Kate is also possibly hiding secrets from her. And we have a storyline that takes place in the past where we follow uh, the perspective of this boy named DJ uh, whose sister was kidnapped, raped, and murdered. We're following the trial of the man who murdered her. And then the third point of view that we're following is Kate's 14 year old daughter Daisy. Daisy is at a public school. Her younger brother goes to the fancy private school with Francis's son. She befriends this man in this creepy truck who is like 30 and they strike up a kind of relationship and I'm assuming all these storylines converge in some way. I just got a reveal when I was reading it on Saturday that I was waiting for, finding out what happened in Francis's past. So I'm excited to see how all of this ties 
together, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's been a good audiobook. That's what I'm gonna listen to to start off a spookathon. Am I running late yet? I feel like this always happens. Yep, 6.12. I should technically be out the door, but I have eight more minutes until I'm officially late, late. This is a really cute look, right? I'll see you guys after work. This is my outfit of the day. Time to go to work, because I'm probably late. Oh, yep, would you look at that? Definitely am. Guys, what is this? What is this? This is not okay. It's only 40 degrees outside. This is not okay. I think the last clip that you saw from me was me filming my dinner, which was several hours ago at this point. It is now like 11 30, 11 45. I didn't really do any reading before dinner or after dinner. I tried after dinner, but I inadvertently fell asleep and took a nap. That's what happens when you go to bed at 12 30 and wake up at 5 30. Eating is just so calming and soothing sometimes and it puts me to sleep. Right now I'm hiding in my mom's guest bedroom which used to be my old bedroom it probably looks familiar if you've been on my channel for a long time for my first read of spookathon i chose to start with someone we know by sherry lapina which is the newest release from sherry lapina i am about a hundred pages a third of the way through the book i made some great progress i woke up from my nap at like 9 30 9 45 ish maybe somewhere around there and i read about a hundred pages in about an hour hour and a half which is very good for me because I'm a pretty slow reader and I'm easily distracted so I'm really proud of myself and it also shows how much I was engaged in this book which is amazing. I read her previous release in Unwanted Guest last year and loved it. It was one of my favorite thrillers that I've read. Well these are more like mysteries not so much thrillers they're like more classic mystery whodunit type of situations. Never actually watched Desperate Housewives, but I feel like this could be comped as like something similar to Desperate Housewives, but I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to dive back into this. I'm hoping that um, before I fall asleep tonight I can read another like 50-ish pages and then I can finish it tomorrow and that would be amazing. I'd have one book done for the Spookathon in two days, which would be like amazing because I have kind of ambitious TBR. I have a lot of options, you know, there's a lot of different ways this could go. I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm going to start editing these clips that I took from today and then I'm going to go to sleep. I don't start working until 11 so I get to stay up a little bit later and compensate for my three hour nap. So I will see you guys probably tomorrow morning for breakfast. Oh. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Oh. Hi, Libby. Here is my outfit of the day. Hey guys, happy spookathon. Day two. I'm late again. <laughs> Oops. Libster, where'd you go? You were just here. Libster, I see you. No, 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 come here. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. No, stop, stop. Oh. <laughs> Drama. Missy. Hi, baby girl. We miss you. Turkey, mashed potatoes, and some corn. Hi, friends. It is the end of Spookathon day two, and I'm just now getting a chance to update you guys because it's been a busy day. It is currently 8. 48. Um, I just got home from work. I ate some dinner and now I'm in my pajamas because that's the first priority when you walk in the door from work. And I'm going to finish my book. I'm going to at least try. I have about 100 pages left. I read 50 pages this morning. I was hoping to get further but I took a little siesta because I was up until 2 in the morning last night which was not intended but it's what happened. So I didn't get as far as I wanted this morning. So I'm gonna try to finish that. 
I'm also going to try to finish my audiobook that I'm currently listening to because I think I have less than 20 minutes left. Let me double check. Yep, I have 16 minutes left of the audiobook. So I'm gonna to try to finish that this evening as well so I can start something new tomorrow. We'll be starting The Vanishing Stair, as long as it's still, yep, there is. The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. So those are my plans. It is, like I said, 8.50. I'm gonna to try to go to bed relatively early tonight because tomorrow is an early day at work and it's National Bosses Day. And we have some things planned for my boss and I would like to get there a little bit early to, well, I would like to beat her there, but that ain't gonna happen. So we'll just accept that as it is right now. But I like to get there a little bit early. I'm trying to go to bed a little bit earlier. I say this, but we'll see what really happens. I might as well get to it, right? Hello. It's now 11 o'clock at night. I took a little bit of a nap while I was reading, but I did finish my first read of the Spookathon with someone we know by Sherry Lapina. So this fulfills the challenge of to read a thriller. Well, I wouldn't really technically classify this as a thriller. This is more like a mystery. I do have another book on my TBR that could work for that if I end up getting to it this week. I don't really know what my thoughts are on it yet or if I have a rating for it yet. I think I'm going to think about it a little bit before I give you my final thoughts. It's also like 11 at night and I'm really tired. I haven't slept much the last two nights, so I don't have enough brain power to formulate an accurate review. I'm going to think on that and go to sleep and I will tell you tomorrow sometime. I only have a few minutes left of my audiobook so hopefully I can finish that while I'm lying in bed before I fall asleep and then I'll be two books done and I'll have two reviews for you guys tomorrow which would just be amazing because it's only going to be Wednesday. Off to a great start. I'm very excited. I'm very optimistic but it's bedtime now. I'll see you guys in the morning. Felix, you're too much. Good morning and welcome to Spookathon day three. It's currently six o'clock in the morning and I'm just uh, fixing up my hair before I go to work today. Last night I did end up finishing her pretty face before I fell asleep. And mom's cats were just screaming and screaming and screaming and they were driving me nuts. So someone we know by Sherry Lapina. It wasn't my favorite Sherry Lapina. I still preferred an unwanted guest, but I did still enjoy it. I called the one reveal at the end quite a bit before it happened. Then the other one, um, I saw right away where it was going once the direction turned that way. So I didn't think it was like super shocking twists and turns, but I still found it really enjoyable. The last like paragraph or so of the book is very chilling though. It kind of sets it up for a sequel, but I don't think it's a mystery thriller. I don't think there will be a sequel, but it kind of sets it up that way and it leaves you very uneasy. And I did really enjoy that. Overall, I would give it like a 3.75 to a four star. Like it was a very solid, fun, engaging read. I mean, I did read it in two days. So I definitely would recommend it. And it's not too spooky or too thrilling. I think a pretty novice mystery reader would be able to read it and really help them get into the genre. Talk about her pretty face. I enjoyed the audiobook. The narrator did a great job, very engaging. I did not find it to be particularly mysterious or particularly suspenseful. It wasn't really all that thrilling in my opinion. I was expecting a lot more out of it too. Kind of let down in my opinion, but not terrible. I would say it's like a three, 3.5, very average, very middle of the road. Still engaging. I think it'd be a good place for a novice mystery thriller reader to start. Even though I technically don't want to count her pretty face towards my challenges for the week. I think I'm gonna end up having to because I don't think I'm gonna finish The Vanishing Stair. And so that one would have completed the challenge for reading a book with red on the cover. The one we know completes the mystery thriller challenge. Trying to get out of the door a little bit earlier today so I can stop at Starbucks. My hair is always what throws me off. I do well and then I surf the hair and the next thing I know I'm running late and it's just a vicious cycle. Day three, here's my outfit of the day. Nope, gotta go. Thank you for choosing our Starbucks. When are we getting started for ya? Can I get a cinnamon almond milk macchiato? What size are we doing? Uh, grande hot. 
Sunday hot cinnamon almond milk macchiato. Yes. Oh my God, I breath and I can't breathe from all the coughing. Oh, my allergies are just terrible and they hurt and I need them to go away. I just got home from work recently. It is currently 5.30. We're about to eat dinner, but really quickly before we do that, I'm going to, I think, pick out my next read for the Spookathon or at least start to think about it. As I mentioned this morning, also, gee, I had sick cream all over my face in case you're wondering what's on my face. This morning I finished Someone We Know by Sherry Lapina. So that's one book down. I also finished, oh no, I finished this last night, not this morning. What did I say? Anyway, I also finished Her Pretty Face last night. So now I have The Wife Between Us, Rules for the Vanishing, and Pumpkin Heads to choose from. And I don't know which one I want to read next. I think I'm leaning towards The Wife Between Us or Pumpkin Heads just because this would be a quick and easy read to knock out today. This one's a little bit longer, obviously. This is probably the one I'm most excited for during the week. I might actually do this one now that I'm thinking about it since it's a library book. And I can return it then to the library with this one because I'm pretty sure this one's overdue. And today's Wednesday, so The Mass Singer is on tonight and I'm definitely gonna be watching that. So that's gonna take a little bit of my reading time away. Are you ready? Rofi! He doesn't look thrilled. Oh, he has a martini. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Spookathon Day 4. We're in the car right now, as you could probably have guessed. It's about 8 o'clock. Here with my girl Libby. She's in a carrier here next to me. And we're going to her favorite place on the planet, the vet. It is that time of year where it's time for uh, their yearly vaccines. So her and I are going for a trip. She's so excited about it. I got in my car just now and there was actual ice on my windshield. Actual ice. Uh, and I can see my breath. I love it. I was doing so good the first couple days of this readathon. Okay, well, I guess it was only the first two days of the readathon with giving you updates before I fell asleep for the night, which is something that I typically am not very great at because I fall asleep all the time. But I fell asleep last night before I could give you an update on how my reading went yesterday. So when we get home from the vet, I will be sure to give you an update and my thoughts on my reading because I did finish a book last night. No, 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 no. Let's move. Told you guys that when we got back from the vet with Libby, I would tell you reading updates. My hair is doing something today. Last night, amidst the Vampire Diaries and The Masked Singer, I was able to finish Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks, which I adored. This was one of the cutest things that I've ever read. I loved it. I loved the art style. I loved the vibrant colors. I loved the fallness of it all. Everything about it is just so folly, and I just Mm, it made me so happy. In this graphic novel, we follow Josie and Deja, who are working at this pumpkin patch. They have worked there every fall for the last couple of years, and this is the last time that they're going to be working at this pumpkin patch before leaving for college. But as the night of Halloween, decide to boycott work for the evening and go on this epic quest to introduce Josiah to another co-worker who he's been crushing on for the last three years but has never talked to and this is literally his last chance. We go on this big wild goose chase through the pumpkin patch. It was really funny as well. Like I was giggling to myself quite a few times and the art style, it's just, it's so pretty. At the end they talk about how Deja knows this person who works as a elf in like a Christmas shop and I was like, oh my gosh, 
please do a Christmas one where they're like elves at a department store because that would be just the best thing ever. So I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I feel like it's a five out of five in my, my graphic novel rating scale. Technically I was using for my challenge of reading a book in a format that you don't normally read which is graphic novel, but like I said, it's not spooky, it's adorable. The next thing that I'm gonna dive into when I get home from work this evening, because I'm about to get ready to go to work, is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen, which is probably the book I'm most excited to read for this readathon. It is a longer book, so hopefully I can knock this out fairly quickly. We'll see how that goes. Gosh, I feel so accomplished, you know? It's day four, I've already finished three books. <laughs> I'm doing real well. I'm doing real well. Thank you for choosing our Starbucks. What can I get you started with? Can I get a grande pumpkin cream cold brew? Grande pumpkin cold cream cream bleh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just that. Alright, I'll see you through the honey. Okay. Clearly I'm getting some star some Starbucks. I can't talk either. I got a you know a real southern accent all of a sudden. I thought really quickly I'd tell you some thoughts on it. What am I listening to? The Vanishing Stare. I was gonna say truly devious, but that's the first book. I am having a hard time being engaged in the story. Like, I'm listening to it, but am I really listening to it? That's the question. Like, I don't think I'm actually, like, actively listening to anything that there be is being said. I'm just here, and it's playing, and there's noise. So, I don't know. It's fine. I'm not very far into it, so I really can't be judging it too harshly eh we'll see thinking about that I'm like man I've thought about so many things in my drive to work today and I don't think any of them had to do with the book that I'm listening to or that I'm supposed to be listening to my hair is so dirty and I don't know if it knows what it wants to do today I tried to put a scrunchie on it to make it look cute did that work it's almost coffee time and there you go Thanks thank so you, see you later. off to work again we're going off to work again see you guys later I don't know where my camera is, so here's my outfit of the day. We are allowed to wear jeans slash leggings today, so I got my leggings on, which I'm so excited about because leggings are my life, and yeah, I feel very comfy and very excited. And now I need to leave because I'm really late. So happy Spookathon day five. Sorry that my daily vlogging has gone hmm the last few days. Bye, baby Lou. Oh, you're so cute. Look at you. Look at the little toe beans. You got the cutest little toe beans, Libby Lou. Hi, friends. It's been a long day. I haven't talked to you yet. Let's get to chatting about Spookathon day five. Six o'clock, I've been home from work for a little, a little less than two hours. Um, I've done no reading so far. I have played with the cats. I've talked to my mom. I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, you know, done all the most productive things. Mom and my dad are now going to pick up dinner. We're having tacos, so I'm so excited. But then after dinner, I don't really have any plans for today, so I'm just going to read as much of this as I can. I didn't do hardly any reading yesterday. I read 15 pages of this, so you know, I did really well, and I really made quite a dent. You know, it went well. Now it's the weekend, and now it's time to conquer the last two books on my TBR. I actually just watched Riley Marie's vlog where she purchased a final copy of this book because this is an ARC and she was raving about it. And I requested this with no knowledge of what it was. Hearing her rave about it, I'm really excited to read it and I hope it's really great. And she gave it five stars. She thinks it's gonna be one of her favorite books of the year. So I have high hopes for this, but that's like a future Jordan task. This is a current Jordan task. Cat is so cute. I want to show you her in just a second because she's just a little bean. Hi, little bean. I'm going to get you. Oh, I touched your tail. What do you think of that? You not? Oh, well, you don't have to be so sassy about it. I'm trying here, trying to find motivation to read, but all I want to do is be asleep. It's only 8.45 and I've only read 44 pages of this book. I don't feel like I can do that yet. But I just wanted to let you know that I really would rather be asleep right now. Hi, Grandma, yet? Here's my outfit of the day for Spookathon day six. My normal uh, 
sweatshirt and uh, leggings garb. And Mom and I are going to run some errands, so I tried to look fancy with the scrunchie. I'm trying to embrace the scrunchie trend. I really wasn't a fan of it when it first came back, but I'm trying to embrace it. My boss told me I looked like a teenager the other day when I wore one, so <laughs> I don't know if it's working. Also, I wanna show you guys a project for today. Are you ready to see my shame? Oh my God. I have no problem doing the laundry, but it's putting the laundry away. That's the issue. It's been sitting like this for probably two to three weeks. Tony and I just went for a walk and now I'm sitting in the car waiting for him because we are going to get ice cream. I'm so excited. I think we're gonna go to the local creamery. I want the puppy chow tornado. Oh, here he comes. We just got back from the creamery and we went to get, well, I wanted a puppy chow tornado and I didn't get the... <laughs> Excuse you. I was gonna get puppy chow, but then we were in line. I saw an apple crisp tornado, so I got that instead. So the reason why I went there, I didn't even end up getting it. it Help him. <laughs> what is he doing? He's trying to make like a hut for himself. He's fine right where he is. Look, he's even using the pillow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fail! I'm sorry, this is probably one of the most boring vlogs that you have ever seen, but I'm doing a lot of reading, which in turn means there's not a lot of other things I'm doing, so not many things for me to vlog with you. I can tell you about some reading progress. It is 10.30 on Saturday, Spookathon day six, and I have 90 pages left of The Wife Between Us. I, this has been kind of a wild ride because I don't really know where this is going. Like I'm pretty much three fourths of the way into the book. The first big reveal, at the end of part one, totally got me. I was so confused. I was exclaiming very loudly like, what, what? I had to go back and reread the chapter like twice so that I could make sure I was understanding what I was reading because I was just like real mom blown. And then since then it's been this like twisted thing that I've had that I feel like I'm not getting the full story yet. Like there are secrets that are still being hidden and there are reveals still to come. It does say that there are revelations all the way through the epilogue. I'm expecting there to be a wild ride, but I am really enjoying this. I have to be really enjoying this if I've read 300 pages in one day. I don't do that very often. I'd really like to finish this today. I don't know if I'll read 90 pages before midnight, but my goal is like before I fall asleep for the evening to have finished this whole book so that I can move on to my last and final book for tomorrow, which is also 400 pages, which is kind of big, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read this whole thing. It looks like it's kind of holding a case file format. Maybe it'll be a little bit quicker. So I got some new PJs. Aren't they cute? They're real soft. I really like them. Matching pants. Watch out. Target, my one true love. Breakfast time, maple cinnamon brown sugar. I'm gonna say that's maple brown sugar. I think it's just maple brown sugar. And I didn't finish it. I'm on page 333. I'm very close. I always feel like somebody's watching me. You're in my spot. You're adorable. Keep living your best life. And you're naughty. Cause you pulled this off the wall yourself. I just finished The Life Between Us by Sarah Pekinen and Greer Hendricks. And this was a wild ride of twists and turns and revelations that I did not see coming. It was just so smartly crafted and I was so hooked and like engaged in this read. And I definitely would say that this kind of runs in the same vein as Gone Girl and Girl on the Train. I didn't particularly like the Girl on the Train, but I could see if you're marketing this to the mass majority, why that's a good comparison. It's not as gruesome or as horrifying as Gone Girl is, a little bit tamer violence wise, but so smart, so gripping. I really, really enjoyed this. So in this novel, we are following two women, one who is soon to be the ex-wife of this man named Richard and one who is his soon to be new wife. 
and I really think that all you need to know going into this book is exactly what the back says. So I'm just going to read it to you again. I think I read this earlier in the vlog. I don't want to spoil anything in giving you a synopsis and I really feel like this is the perfect synopsis for this book. When you read this book, you will make many assumptions. You will assume you're reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she's obsessed with her replacements, a beautiful younger woman who is about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle assume nothing perfect description for this book i really really enjoyed this i think i'm gonna give it like a four four point five out of star look four four point five out of five stars not my favorite mystery thriller of the year that's still every locked door by riley sagar but probably my second favorite i know they have another book an anonymous girl which i have on audio but i heard more mixed things about that one in comparison sunday this last day of the readathon I have two options. I could either dive into Rules for, Van Rule, blah, blah. Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall, or I can finish my audiobook, The Vanishing Stair, which I just borrowed from the library. I can do either of those things, and I haven't decided which route I'm going to go for. I probably should do The Vanishing Stair, because I'm like almost halfway through that book. A red cover, it has a speak. A spooky word in the title so and it's a book in a different format so it fits more challenges although I would be reading it with my eyes not listening with my ears we'll see I'm gonna watch some YouTube drink my coffee we'll reconvene in a bit I feel like the entirety of this vlog is from this shot and for that I apologize I don't really have anything to update you on other than I did start rules for the vanishing I'm not far I'm on page 36 but i was watching my spookathon vlog from last year and it was right when we first got libby and she was so little so little i'll insert a clip here so you can see how tiny she was and like look at her now look at her she's so fat she's so fat you are you're my little piggy she's done with me i also went and acquired a pumpkin chocolate chip muffin i'm so excited to try this with powdered sugar on top Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I approve. I'm currently attempting to take an Instagram picture. Let's see how this goes. I don't think these look too bad, do they? We'll see. I'm absolutely sweating my butt off. This lighting is atrocious. Let's go over here. This is much better. <laughs> I thought I'd come downstairs, put some shorts on, and start working on disaster. That is my living space down here. I'm currently doing laundry, which means that I need to do something about that. <laughs> because I'm gonna have so much laundry to put away later today. I'm going to take a break from reading. It's cooler down here. I'm gonna cool off a little bit. I'm gonna just mainly work on this chair. I'm also gonna pop on my audiobook. There as well. Much. He of the colored contact lenses. I thought since I was trying this on, I'd show you guys. This is my Halloween costume for work. I'm going to be a dragon. Can you tell? Where's my hood? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like an adult. Oh, my God. Look at the tail. Like an adult badass. I have a lion one like this, but it's a little bit too big on me. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous, and I love it so much. I wanted to show you guys this shirt. It's the last day of Spookathon, and I feel like this shirt is very appropriate and haven't worn it yet. So on the pocket here, there's a little moon with some witches and it has RD on it. And then on the back, can you see it? It says, Rosie Days Boutique, put a spell on you with the two dogs. This is a piece of merch from the Rosie Days Boutique, which is owned by a YouTuber, Casey Holmes, that I watch and love and have followed for a really long time. And this is like one of her limited edition merch pieces that they launched for Halloween. And it's super cute. I felt like it was very appropriate for this reading vlog, so 
I'm wearing it now and I'm dancing. Who doesn't want to live out here all year round? <laughs> 